Hi guys, so I, I know we started these in class. I'm not sure at the time I'm making this video how many we're going to get through in our next class, but equations with fractions are something you really have to practice. So even if we happen to finish the notes, your homework tonight is to even write these down on loose leaf paper and try them again with me. All right, first we're going to tackle some of the cross multiplying type. Here you have something that almost looks like a proportion. But to make it a proportion, we'd have to turn this 9 into a fraction by placing it over 1. And now we have a proportion, which you guys know how to solve. We're going to cross multiply. 1 times 6 parenthesis x plus 2 is 6 parenthesis x plus 2. The equals goes in the middle, and 4 times 9 is 36. So to solve this, we must distribute to get rid of those parentheses. You end up with 6x plus 12 equals 36. Isolate that variable by subtracting 12 from both sides. You end up with 6x equals 36 minus 12 is 24. Dividing by 6 on both sides, you get x equals 4. This next one's very similar because it's a fraction set equal to a whole number. So let's put that whole number over 1, which doesn't change its value, but it turns it into a fraction. And we'll cross multiply. 1 times 3x plus 5 is just 3x plus 5. And we're going to do 2 times 2x minus 1. I know some of you like to do that distributing in your head. I like to write this step so I don't make any mistakes. When we distribute to get rid of the parentheses, we end up with 3x plus 5 equals 4x minus 2. To get the variable to one side, I subtract 3x from 3x and also from 4x. I end up with 5 equals 4x take away 3x is 1x minus 2. To finish up getting that variable by itself, add 2 to both sides, you'll see that x is 7. Now, letter C will ultimately be a cross-multiplying type. But right now, we have too many terms over here to go ahead and put anything over 1 and cross-multiply. So here we're going to have to get the x to one side. We're going to add 4x to both sides. However, this guy here is a fraction with a denominator of 3. And when we add fractions, we need a common denominator. So I'm actually going to write this as, rewrite this ex equation as 2x over 3 equals 14 minus, instead of 4x, I'm just going to change that to 12x over 3. Because 12x over 3 is equivalent to 4x. So now I can add 12x over 3 on this side, as well as on this side. 2x over 3 plus 12x over 3 is 14x over 3, and you get equals 14. Now you can put that over 1 and cross multiply. 14x times 1 gives you 14x. The equals goes in the middle. And 14 times 3 gives you, gives you 42. Dividing by 14 on both sides, you get x equals 3. This next one is all set, ready to put that whole number over 2 and cross multiply. x plus 7 times 1 is x plus 7. And 3 times 2 is 6. Subtracting 7 from both sides, you get x equals negative 1. Now I know something like E or letter E, you're going to look at it and you're going to hate it right off the bat because it looks confusing. The thing is, in order to turn something into to a proportion, you need one piece on the left side and only one piece on the right. We have this plus 5 here that we need to get rid of. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract 5 from both sides. 
That leaves us with 1 half 2x plus 4 all over 6 equals 8 minus 5 is 3. <clears throat> well, we can put this 3 over 1 now and cross multiply. 1 times 1 half parenthesis 2x plus 4 is simply 1 half parenthesis 2x plus 4. The equals goes in the middle, and 6 times 3 is 18. We know how to solve this. We're going to distribute the half through the parentheses. Half of 2x is 1x. Half of 4 is 2. To get x by itself, you simply subtract 2 from both sides. Here you end up with x equals 16. Now let's practice a couple where we're distributing a fraction. What you want to remember is that when you're multiplying something by a fraction, it's like multiplying the numerator of that fraction by the term inside the parentheses and then dividing by the denominator. One half is easy to work with. One half of 4x would give you half of 4 is 2, so 2x. One half of negative 6 is negative 3 equals 15. When you add 3 to both sides, you end up with 2x equals 18. And dividing by 2 on both sides, you get x equals 9. So keep in mind that multiplying by 1 half is the same as dividing by 2. Likewise, in B, multiplying by 1 third is the same as dividing by 3. 1 third of 6x is the same as 6x divided by 3, which is 2x. 1 third times negative 9 is the same as negative 9 divided by 3, which is negative 3, equals 21. So don't be afraid of the fractions. Sometimes once you distribute by those fractions, the fractions go away. To get x by itself, we're going to add 3 to both sides. We end up with 2x equals 24. Dividing by 2 on both sides, you get an x value of 12. So now these are the problems that kids hate the most. Because in order to cross multiply, you have to have one fraction on one side and another fraction on the other. And if you look at this problem, we've got a sum over here. It's not just one fraction. So we're going to use the getting a common denominator method because we can't add fractions unless we have a common denominator. So. 5 and 2 are our current denominators. A number I can think of that 5 and 2 both divide evenly into is 10. So I'm going to use a common denominator of 10. You don't need to change the denominator of the 14 to a 10 because you're not adding that into the sum. It's just these two fractions that we're adding. And since we have a new denominator, our numerator is going to change as well. 5 times 2 is what gave us 10, so we have to multiply the numerator by 2, giving us 2x in the top. 2 times 5 is what gave us 10, so we have to multiply the numerator by 10. We get 5x over 10. 2x over 10 is equivalent to 1x over 5. 5x over 10 is equivalent to 1x ever, over 2. Now that we have a common denominator, we can add these fractions together. 2x over 10 plus 5x over 10 gives me 7x over 10. And on this side, we have equals 14. Fraction on the left side, and we can turn the 14 into a fraction. And now we just simply cross multiply to solve it. 7 times 7x times 1 is 7x. The equals goes in the middle. 10 times 14 is 140. Dividing by 7 on both sides, you get x equals 20. Now here's another example. We have to add before we can cross multiply, and unfortunately, again, we have different denominators. But I can use 6 as a common denominator, because 6 divides evenly into 6, and so does 2. Since this denominator in the second fraction here is not changing, the numerator will not change either. But to change the 2 to a 6, we multiplied by 3. So we must also multiply the numerator by 3, giving us 3x. 
3x over 6 plus 1x over 6 gives you 4x over 6 equals 2. Now you're ready to put that over 1 and cross multiply. 4x times 1 is 4x. The equals goes in the middle. 6 times 2 is 12. Dividing by 4 on both sides, you get x equals 3. Let's try one more. Here we have a sum. It could be a difference as well, could be subtraction, but regardless whether you're adding or subtracting fractions, you need a common denominator. In this one, I'm going to use 6 because I know that 3 goes into 6, and I know that 6 goes into 6. I'm not changing the denominator in the second fraction, so I don't need to change the numerator. However, I multiplied 3 times 2 to get 6. So I now have to multiply the numerator by 2. And 2 times 2x is 4x. Adding those fractions, 4x over 6 plus 1x over 6 gives you 5x over 6 equals 5. Now you're ready to put that guy over 1 and cross multiply. 5x times 1 is 5x. 6 times 5 is 30. And now simply just divide both sides by 5 to see that x equals 6. <clears throat> now we're going to do the exact same three problems, only using a different method. And once I'm done showing you this method, you're going to have to make a decision. Do you like the common denominator method better? Or what we call I hate fractions method better? The I hate fractions method allows you to get rid of denominators immediately so you don't have to deal with fractions in your equation. And here's how you do it. First, you record in your mind the denominators you want to get rid of, 5 and 2. And we're going to use the multiplication property of equality, and we're going to multiply every single term in this equation by the denominators we want to get rid of times 5 times 2 and you have to do it here as well times 5 times 2. If you don't do it to all three pieces then you don't have this, an equivalent equation. Now looking at this piece here you've got x over 5 times 5 times 2. Well, what happens is the 5 in the top cancels with the 5 in the bottom, and you're left with just 2x. If you look at this piece here, you have 5 times 2 over x over 2. You could do 5 times 2, and you'll end up with 10x over 2. Dividing 10x by 2, you get 5x, or you could just simply cross out the 2s, and then you end up with 5 times x, which is 5x as well. And 14 times 2 is 28, and 28 times 5 is 140. So see what happens when we multiply every piece of the equation by the denominators we hate and want to get rid of? We end up with no fractions at all. And we can combine like terms. 2x plus 5x is 7x equals 140. Dividing by 7 on both sides, you get x equals 20. Remember, you got x equals 20 up here as well. You should have the same answer. They're the exact same equation. The only difference is I used a different method, the I hate fractions method which is just, you're not going to see that in a textbook. That's just a name that I came up with for this method. If you look at the second one, it's the denominator of 2 and 6 you want to get rid of. So we're going to multiply this first term by 2 and by 6, this second term by 2 and by 6, and this third term by 2 and by 6. In this first piece, the 2 cancels with the 2, you're left with 6x. In the second piece, the 6 cancels with the 6, you're left with plus 2x. And in the third piece, 2 times 2 is 4 times another 6 is 24. Combining like terms, you get 8x equals 24. 
dividing by 8 on both sides, you get x equals 3, which is good, because guess what we got up here? x equals 3. Same equation, same answer, different method. All right, the next one, the denominators we don't like and that we want to get rid of are 3 and 6. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go up and erase this, if it'll let me. It's not letting me. So we are going to multiply this term by 3 and by 6. Same with this term, and I apologize that I'm bumping into my work, and this term. The 3 cancels with the 3. You're left with 6 times 2x, which is 12x. The 6 cancels with the 6. You're left with 3 times x, which is 3x. 5 times 3 is 15, and 15 times 6 is 90. Combining like terms, you get 15x equals 90. Dividing both sides by 15, you end up with x equals 6. <clears throat> Same thing we got above. All right, so here's the deal. Look at down here. Extra credit. I told you I was going to sneak in some extra credit opportunities, and here's one of them. I want you to try and solve these equations below. This is what you're going to come into class and show me next time. And if you get them both right and you've shown all your work, I'm going to add two bonus points to your lowest test score at the end of the quarter. Um, so by the end of the quarter, you'll have taken the Unit 2 test, maybe even the Unit 3 test, probably not, but definitely the Unit 2 test. So please try these ones on your own. And that's what I'd like you to show me, not only your completed notes, but your attempt at these two equations. Have a great night, and I'll see you next class.